Hola, Bogota. ¿Cómo están? ¿La están pasando bien? That's all the Spanish I know. Actually, you know what? First of all, why don't we uh, give a round of applause for Victoria, because she's doing a great job as an MC, right? We love the energy, and I think um, both Henry and I speak on behalf of MobileCoin that we're incredibly grateful and appreciative and excited to be here to participate with this event with all of you guys. So thanks again. All right, so like Victoria said, uh, that's Henry, Co. We both work at MobileCoin. And uh, we'll give you a little bit of background about MobileCoin in case you guys are unfamiliar with our project. So MobileCoin is a layer one blockchain, and MobileCoin was founded in 2017. Uh, the MobileCoin blockchain was constructed completely from the ground up. Uh, our consensus is an implementation called the MobileCoin Consensus Protocol. And it is similar in style to the Stellar Consensus Protocol. Um, we've also integrated bulletproofs, um, some ring signatures, and other forms of cryptography to support confidential transactions on mobile devices. Our code is completely open source. It's available to view on GitHub. and um, we've also been audited by some of the industry-leading uh, auditing firms like Trillibits and others. Our mission is to build and support fast, secure, and mobile-first payments. And that might sound like it's something uh, very easy and simple to do. You might say, hey, isn't that what Cash App or Venmo or Rpay already does? But as we all know, um, you know, a lot of those services and platforms are custodial and almost like databases, right? And we built this on a blockchain. And uh, it turns out to do this on mobile devices on a UTXO-based blockchain, which is what MobileCoin is, is uh, difficult because generally speaking, devices and nodes have to sync to a full ledger in order to confirm and validate transactions. That's very CPU and bandwidth prohibitive. Um, and our team, especially on mobile devices, our team spent several years researching and developing a technology called FOG that enables all of this, all of this to happen. And that's a much more technical conversation that I think you guys are interested in. However, the long story short, uh, FOG leverages advancements in uh, confidential computing to support fully oblivious transactions on mobile devices. Um, some of our investors include Coinbase, Binance, FTX to Alameda, and uh, MobileCoin has been available on both Binance.com and FTX.com for uh, about a year. Henry, you have anything to add? No, that was very good. Awesome. Well, don't worry, we divided this up. Henry, is, Henry <laughs> I assure you, has a part. All right, so in addition to MobileCoin, we have been developing our standalone, oh, some things didn't go through, app, mobile, a mobile wallet. This might be a different version. All right, we'll see. We have been developing a consumer-facing, non-custodial wallet that's focused on simple and clean user experience. Mobi is our answer um, to help support our endeavors to uh, achieve mass adoption. And our chief product officer is a gentleman named Bob Lee. So some of you guys might be familiar with uh, Cash App and Square. Bob was an early Android developer, and then he was the first CTO of Square, and then uh, he created Cash App there. And part of the reason he joined MobileCoin was he wanted to be able to pursue a more uh, inclusive and global vision than he had at Cash App. Cash App um, is kind of like Venmo, and it's, it's a very popular uh, payments application in the United States, but it's pretty much limited in the United States, right? Um, and similar to our pay, right, it, it's not global. And Mobi supports global transactions right now off the bat. Henry, you want to add anything here for Mobi? Uh, I think uh, we have a lot more in the yep. next slide, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to unpack Mobi a little bit more. Mobi, like I said, is a non-custodial wallet, um, and it was designed to reduce the friction points that are commonly associated with crypto and Web3. What are some of these? All right, so one of our answers, um, we've created pin-based recovery through a service called Secure Value Recovery, SVR. How many of you, I know I should have uh, referenced this, Nevin brought a poll up earlier, right? And a lot of us have some exposure to cryptocurrencies. How many of you are familiar with the concept of a 12 or 24 seed phrase or mnemonic phrase? How many of you enjoy the process it takes to secure that, right? <laughs> like, I think maybe the first time that was kind of cool, 
You know, it's like a novel experience. You're writing it down on a piece of paper. But how many of you are actually taking the time to transfer it appropriately, custodying it with the appropriate measures, rolling it up, and putting it into a little fire safe vessel and putting it in a safe deposit or whatever? Um, I, I mean, is anyone actually doing that for every wallet they create? I, I see like no hands. You, you, maybe one, one guy here. How, how many of us have a wallet, at least one wallet, where if we lost the device, the money's gone? <laughs> Fewer than I would have thought. Yeah, I mean, I do, right? Yeah. And so, you know, the 24 seed phrase, mnemonic or 12 word, I think, again, not a doctor, but I think was created to help secure the process. Ironically, I would argue that the most, most secure location for a secret is really here, right? In your mind. But it's very difficult to remember 24 words that are randomly generated. And when I say in your mind, I mean that pre-Neuralink before Elon Musk puts a microchip in our brain. Um, additionally, I think I've seen it personally, a lot of people, and maybe some of you have done it as well, where people will screenshot that 24 seed phrase or copy and paste it. Again, now you're introducing more attack services. I'm kind of rambling, but long story short, our team, again, uh, leveraged advancements in uh, confidential computing to now, um, through SVR, you can derive a new, essentially, seed phrase in the form of a six-digit pin, right? It's much easier to remember six digits, and as long as you are able to uh, authenticate, authenticate ownership of a device, um, and you have that six-digit pin, you can recover your funds. Like, if I have my Mobi wallet, toss it in a lake, or someone drives over it, I can get a new device, confirm ownership through several uh, factors of authentication, and then with the pin, I can get it just like that. Next thing, speed. So uh, we believe that in order for payments to really be effective and used, um, they need to be quick. And so we aim to have all transactions on the mobile coin blockchain to finalize in five seconds or less. Um, I think we all agree that no one wants to wait minutes for transactions to confirm while your counterparty is you know, on the side of Starbucks. It's like kind of awkward, you're just like waiting for each other or whatever. Um, I think that is the experience we're used to, right? Right now, we either swipe a credit card, tap a card, or we pay with cash, and that's very quick. Um, a lot of the experiences in crypto right now, I'd argue, are a degradation of the current user experience. And we think if, in order for uh, payments to be adopted globally, the user experience has to be on par or exceed what it is currently. Um, and so that's why we're so focused on speed. And the last thing I'll say on that is I, another thing that I really love about this is that it, the transactions finalize so quick that I don't even have anxiety of whether or not I sent it to the wrong address or something. They just appear, and I think we've all been there. We're looking at Etherscan and seeing what happened to that transaction. Don't have to do that anymore. In that same vein of user experience, um, we have implemented usernames. Uh, similar to ENS, Right? Uh, we don't think it's a clean user experience to have to copy and paste or type out a string of alphanumeric characters in order to send someone else money. You should be able to look someone up by their name or by their phone number, um, just like sending a text message, right? And that's what we've implemented with our username and handles. All transactions are end-to-end -end encrypted. Uh, in, again, dovetailing on the whole custody topic, we believe that users should be able to have custody of their funds and their data, and so, uh, Moby does not mine or harvest any of the data between peer-to-peer -peer transactions. That is um, up to the customer to decide how much they want to share. And last but certainly not least, Moby is borderless, like I said. You can uh, send transactions in Moby um, on the mobile coin network anywhere. But Moby still needed to solve a very critical problem. Suspense. Payments work better when you are transacting in a stable currency. And on that topic, so I just want to say, I know a lot of people here might criticize and say, hey, that's a dollar, and a dollar is super volatile. Yes, we are experiencing inflation in the United States as well. I will just counter that and say, I think US dollars are much less volatile than 99.99% of, of cryptocurrencies that are out there right now. And a matter of fact, most cryptocurrencies are valued 
against the US dollar anyways, right? And so we believed, again, in order for transactions to be meaningful, you need something like a dollar. No one wants to be the guy who bought pizza with Bitcoin and then is like, gosh darn it, I could have bought a country. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to hand this over to Henry and let him introduce our newest product. Thank you, Ko. Thank you so much. Is the microphone working well? Okay, good. Today, I am here to announce a couple of things, maybe three. The first is this new stablecoin that we're calling the electronic dollar. All right, so what is the electronic dollar? Well, first of all, is, we hope, one of the first R tokens. In fact, I just had a conversation with Thomas right before getting up on stage about whether or not we could deploy it today. But um, Mogul, Mo MobileCoin is really excited to deploy um, an R token. Yeah. <laughs> so that's announcement number one. I am gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a bit about it on the next slide, what that R token looks like. But for now, let me just say, we plan on wrapping it to our blockchain so that you get all of um, the benefits of the mobile coin blockchain that Co just told you about. Um, I will say that one of the things that attracted us to the R token protocol is the full collateralization. Like, we did not want to do an algorithmic stablecoin. We've been planning for about two years to do a stablecoin and been talking to Reserve for about a year of that. And um, we are just determined that people do not lose value in this stable coin. So we want it to be fully collateralized. Um, that is going along. Um, as Co said, our blockchain is borderless because it is a blockchain, right? And so is Ethereum. So whether you're dealing with the R token or you're dealing with the wrapped R token, it's like permissionless to be able to use it because it's a borderless blockchain. However, our app is also borderless, as Co was just talking about. So we intend for Mobi to be used all around the world. And so suddenly sending that money back to your parents um, in another country um, is easy with Mobi. Easy, quick, fast, transactions settle in less than five seconds, as Co said. Um, and I want to talk about the fees a little bit. Um, we have built our blockchain to be extremely inexpensive to operate and therefore we can charge very small fees. In fact, we wanted to not charge fees at all. Okay, that was a design goal, but then we realized that people could denial of service attack us by just slamming zero value transactions onto our blockchain. And we didn't want that to be possible. So transaction fees for us are not so much a revenue source, they're a way to prevent denial of service attacks. It costs you something to send a transaction. So we're gonna set them as low as we can at all times. And for our electronic dollars, we've picked a quarter cent um, for our starting fee, no matter how big your transaction is. So suddenly, like microtransactions become possible with this new R token, which I am really excited about as well. <laughs> yeah. Second, that fee does not get, need to be paid in our base token MOB. Like our original token, that we put, on out, put our blockchain out with in 2000 is called MOB. And MOB is a volatile asset. And immediately, people were concerned about doing payments in this volatile asset. Particularly, like over these you know, two years, assets have gone up and down, sometimes really quickly. Like we had some situations where people got some MOB and it went up, in, it went up like 10x in the course of a week and then returned back to where it was. And so that was like part of when we just like, okay, we need to add new tokens to our chain. They need to be able to be stable. And you know, that's when we started working on this project. But not, we are not gonna require you to get MOB in order to pay that transaction fee. How many people have had that experience where you, like, you get some USDC or some Tether or whatever, and now you wanna go do something with it and you can't because the wallet it got sent to has no ETH in it, right? And so you have to go get some ETH. How many of you have like six or seven different wallets right now that have little bits of ETH in it because of you just trying to do transactions even with yourself sometimes and you have need that ETH. And it just gets even worse when you start doing this cross-chain stuff where now you need to have little bits of Solana and little bits of this and little bits of that everywhere. 
Okay, we thought as a design goal, this is terrible and we needed to fix it, and we did. So we're gonna let you pay your transaction fees in electronic dollars, when you're transacting in electronic dollars. Yeah. It's really important though to our network that you know that fundamental coin, that native coin, MOBE, is solid healthy. So these fees, they all go to the Mobile Coin Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that secures the network, um, provides for its future development. Um, Mobile Coin Inc., the company that Co and I work for, um, we don't own the network. The Mobile Coin Foundation does. And so the foundation gets the fees, and what they are going to do is sweep those fees um, and auction them off for MOBE. So the fees do end up being in MOBE, you just don't have to deal with it. All right, so let's talk about the basket. Let's talk about what this R token is. Um, we modeled the R token on RSV, um, or at least we planned to. I mean, obviously, we haven't deployed it yet because nobody's deployed an R token yet. But um, we really like that RSV basket. Uh, we like the auditability of the underlying tokens that people trust USDC, TrueUSD, and USDP, um, and we want that trust. And we like the diversity of the basket. The fact that this basket is not tied to one individual company means it's built for the future. And with the R token protocol, we know we can build governance that if you know, any of these companies should hit rockier times, um, if some other company should emerge, if some central bank digital currency comes out that we want to include, we have the ability to um, adjust that basket as we go along. We also want it to be uh, extra protected with the insurance that we heard about today. Um, and sustainable for the people who are governing it. And so we've decided we will add one of these um, uh, yield-bearing layers, like Aave and Compound. Um, I was really excited to hear a bunch of the details of that. Thank you, um, Taylor, for walking us through that today. Um, I understand it much better than I ever did before. Um, and so we'll have uh, people staking their RSR to provide additional uh, collateral that can be accessed if anything should happen, if there should be some technical problem with the underlying basket. And so I think in a lot of ways, uh, you know, as we heard earlier, um, like the RSV plus basket, I think we have in mind um, doing something for the electronic dollar that is RSV plus like um, from the way I've heard it described. And we're really excited about that. Okay, you've heard a lot about how our blockchain is end-to-end -end encrypted. And so we just wanna talk for a moment about a couple of uh, ways our blockchain is safe. Safe for society and safe for the people who are putting their dollars into it. Um, one way it is safe is that actually individuals are not going to directly interact with the R token, at least not for now. Individuals, when using our blockchain, are going to get their mobile e USD, which is what I'm calling like the version of it that's on our blockchain, the wrap token, um, they're going to get it from financial institutions. And so they're going to have relationships with these financial institutions. Um, and uh, those financial institutions will be responsible for making sure, from a societal level, that this is safe. You know, that money laundering is not happening, for example, um, using the mobile, the electronic dollar. Okay. So the other piece is how is it safe for the backers, for the people who are actually buying these tokens? And so let's talk a, bit, a, bit, a little bit about how wrapping works because interchain bridges are the thing we keep hearing about where the money is getting lost, you know, where people are attacking and getting, and getting the money lost. So our intention here is actually not to open up the bridge to just anybody. It's going to be a very guarded bridge. And the guarding is on the part of having liquidity providers. Those are the people who are allowed to interact with the bridge. Okay, and they too... Um, our financial institutions um, that have been accepted into this program. So they will be well known. There is no way to use the bridge as some kind of mixer, okay? Um, this is not a tornado cash. Um, so the liquidity provider will um, get some R token. Oh, it went a little ahead of where I wanted it to. Let's see if I can go back. Okay, good. They get, they get their R token and they deposit it in the Gnosis safe that is uh, where all the collateral is held all the R tokens for the wrapping. Um, they uh, create a request to mint um, some wrapped uh, electronic dollars and they let Reserve know. Reserve is actually acting as our bridge operator. 
So um, we are really excited. I mean, thank you so much for um, providing this function in our ecosystem. We really appreciate it. Um, so upon getting that um, request, Reserve will verify that the deposit made it into the Gnosis safe and that it's settled. Okay, so the funds have to be there before Reserve kicks in and does the next thing, which is cosigns. So it's a multi-sig, right? And so um, one partner in the multi-sig is the liquidity provider, and the other partner in the multi-sig is Reserve. And both of those partners can actually do their own multi-sig. So Reserve can have like three or five people at that level who are actually signing um, this mint. And the liquidity provider can have like a two of two to make sure that nobody can run away with their money inside their own organization. And so the idea here is that no one organization and no one individual conspiring with one other individual can actually steal any money. Um, we have tried to set this up to be extremely secure and robust against that. So once uh, the uh, Gnosis Safe is told to release, oh sorry, not the Gnosis Safe, once the mobile coin blockchain is told to mint um, these uh, electronic dollars, then that happens, and it is sent back to the liquidity provider at their mobile coin address. And now they have the mobile version of electronic dollars. So that's wrapping. <laughs> unwrapping, very similar. I think you're gonna feel like I'm going through the same flow again, but obviously unwrapping is a little different, so I'm just gonna walk it through, and I think you'll just get a, a, a better idea so in unwrapping, again, we start with this approved um, known liquidity provider. Um, they are going to burn some of the mobile coin electronic dollar because they want some R token back out of the safe. Um, we have created, as part of our technology for doing this, we have created, even though mobile coins blockchain overall is end-to-end uh, -end encrypted and nobody can see who has what balance, we've made some special addresses that have this feature where you can only send to them, you can't spend out of them, and because of that, we can also just publish their keys. So this burn address is an address that is not spendable and whose keys we have published so that anybody can look at all the transactions that have arrived in it. And so that's what we call a burn address. So the liquidity provider will just send coins there, everybody can see they landed, and they can never be spent. Um, Again, the liquidity provider signs uh, a Gnosis safe withdrawal and uh, lets Reserve know that it's there. Reserve checks the burn address and makes sure that the tokens got burnt and then cosigns and lets the blockchain know and uh, the Gnosis safe then releases the funds back around to the liquidity provider. And they get back the R token and then they can decide what they want to do with that R token. They can now, if they want to go to the R token port portal and get the collateral, for example, should they want to do that. So that's the basic wrapping, the unwrapping, um, a little bit about how the governance works. Uh, I think the one last thing I want to point out before handing it back to Co, um, is that this is actually live today. Okay? Our Mobi app is right now transacting electronic dollars. Now, of course, not with the R token, right? Because no R tokens have been deployed yet. So we did this wrapping process with our Gnosis safe using RSV. So as we move forward through the next few weeks, I'm sure we will keep the RSV. As you know, we get a little more experience with R tokens, um, feel very, very comfortable. Also figure out just some of how we want to set up that governor that I heard about and all those roles. I think we have some things to work through, but we will be replacing RSV in the basket with this new electronic dollar R token in the very near future. And with that, I want to give it back to Kurt. Thank you, Henry. Um, we uh, may or may not be seeing a live demo very shortly of what Henry <laughs> just talked about. But first, we also kind of wanted to announce some of the partners that we're working with in our ecosystem. So um, maybe some of you are familiar with MoonPay, MoonPay has been doing great work. I'll let you guys kind of read that quote while I talk about them. That quote is by Ivan Soderwright, the CEO of MoonPay. And MoonPay, um, part of their mission is to 
help onboard as many people in crypto as possible. And they do that by making it much more accessible for your average person to have exposure to crypto. And uh, MoonPay is live right now in Mobi. If you want mobile coin, you can get it through the Mobi app via MoonPay's uh, onboarding process. And it takes like a minute and a half. It's very impressive and uh, really grateful that they decided to partner and work with us. Additionally, uh, we're excited to announce that we are working with Wire um, to support USD off-ramps. Uh, like I have mentioned uh, several times, we are trying to address a market beyond just the crypto native folks, right? Um, and so what solid and user-friendly off-ramps provide is that people can get exposure to Mobi or soon EUSD, and then they can also send that directly into their bank account without having to know what a centralized exchange is or a DEX or a swap service or whatever, right? I think that is the user experience that someone like uh, my dad, who's 80, would be much more accustomed to. I don't think he'd be able to figure out crypto, and I don't think most people, I think that's, it. that's one of the reasons we haven't seen this adoption. Um, so again, this is another quote by Yanis Gianaros, who's the CEO of Wire. And then third, um, we are also excited to announce that we are working with Elliptic on the endpoints for KYC and AML. Um, we are uh, doing everything. Um, we, we are meeting the industry standards and if not surpassing them to ensuring that we are as compliant and uh, meeting all the regulation standards. And this is a quote by James Smith, the founder of Elliptic. So kind of in summary, we are trying to build stable, fast, inexpensive, secure mobile payments through EUSD and the Mobi app. And this is done, again, by leveraging and integrating the technology of both the reserve protocol and the mobile coin protocol. We are hoping, and actually it is live, like Henry said, with EUSD, you can send a dollar digitally from somewhere in the United States to Bogota or to the Middle East, to Africa, to Mexico, I guess theoretically to Mars if there's more, enough Starlink. You know, yeah. I don't know if we can agree, uh, guarantee the five second finality with that, but the gist of it is it's, you can send dollars anywhere quickly without intermediaries. And quarter cent. With almost no transaction fee cost. And it's final. Yes. It's and yours. It's, when you get it, it's yours. <laughs> and another thing that's not on this slide, um, this is the first of potentially, we hope, many different types of assets on the mobile coin blockchain. And uh, I'll let Henry speak a little bit to that. But um, yes, EUSD is our first, but we plan to support other assets like yeah. Bitcoin or Ethereum. Yeah, well, when I heard earlier today um, how uh, Reserve is already working on like a Euro R token and already thinking about uh, a Bitcoin tracking R token, I was like, oh, oh. Because those are like, that's our shopping list for like the next two things we do is wrap something indexed to Bitcoin and wrap something indexed to the Euro. So I think we may have some more work to do together. <laughs> but it's just the beginning. Yeah. All right, and uh, we mentioned earlier that Mobi is live on the App Store and in the Google Play Store. However, it is uh, guarded by a waitlist. But if you guys, uh, to the folks here, if you use this QR code or that link, you guys get early access. And uh, eventually, you know, once this video and stuff is published, other people can get early access. But right now, if you want early access to Mobi, you really have to talk to someone from the team that has um, privileges to enable that or scan this QR code. <laughs> I promise I'm not stuck in your private keys or anything weird like that. And then, before we do our live demo, again, just kind of wanted to thank Reserve and everyone here for uh, hosting us. And um, these are a couple handles to our social media. We, uh, to kind of stay abreast of the latest and greatest of what we're doing, um, follow us on our Twitter at MobileCoin or at MobiApp. And then feel free to join our Discord, mobilecoin.chat, if you are interested in learning more about our community or engaging with the team directly. With that being said, I think we're doing a little bit of a live demo. All right. So bear with me for a second. 
we're less worried about the demo working than being able to get a hold of our colleague. I think <laughs> we're good. So if you guys want to be able to, uh, I think they're just going to post the uh, screen okay. sharing. You know, while that's getting going, I just want to give all of you a hand, all of you in the audience who are from Reserve, for having built such an amazing thing that allows us to build the electro electronic dollar on top of it. We really, really are impressed with all the work you've done and with the clarity and vision of the company. So first, I'm just going to, I don't want to freak the technical team out, but I am going to introduce Bob really quick and let him see the crowd. I, <laughs> Bob, comms check, can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Check, check. All right, Bob. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Hello. I'm going to see if I can change my camera settings so you, <laughs> you can see these people. If not, here, can you see these people? Okay. Can you see anybody? Maybe see. not. Hola, Bogota. Me llamo Bob Lee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to now go back to the screen. Yep, I'm going to let, like I said, Bob Lee is our chief product officer and... Um, I'm going to let him introduce himself and uh, what he's been working on, and then we're going to do a live demo. All right, Bob, stage so is yours. Cool. If you want to switch to my face for a second, that's fine. If not, we can just look at Moby because I don't mind that either. No, they got, they got, they got um, some of your beautiful face. Okay, good. Uh, like I said, my name's Bob Lee, and I'm dialed in from Miami, Florida. Um, just a quick note, if you want to give someone else access to Moby, get them past the waiting list, you can also send them a payment. You can send a payment to e anyone, even if they don't have a wallet yet, which is, I think is a first for a uh, non-custodial crypto wallet. We just launched that feature last week. A um, little bit about myself. My passion is building products that make the world a better place. And MobileCoin definitely fits that bill. Um, in the past, I helped create Android. And we created an open source phone OS that made smartphones accessible to people all over the world. I was also the CTO of Square, where we enabled millions of people to accept card payments and go into business for themselves. While I was at Square, I created Cash App. It was the first version of myself. We simplified peer-to-peer -peer payments and brought banking to millions of unbanked Americans. With MobileCoin and EUSD, I hope to continue that mission globally, like Co said. I started advising MobileCoin in January of last year. One of the first things I said is we're not competing with other crypto apps. Those are typically solutions in search of a problem. MobileCoin is competing with traditional payment apps. We need to focus on solving real customers' problems, i.e. sending money, sending payments. Most customers think and want to transact in their own fiat currency, as Co said. And in my opinion, crypto should be an implementation detail. That's what's gonna make it accessible to people like Co's dad. Creating an end-to-end -end encrypted stablecoin was a steep technical and business challenge, as you've seen here. When we figured out how to make EUSD late last year, I realized we could finally deliver non-custodial crypto-based wallet with the ease of use of a traditional payments app. Around the same time, I realized the importance of end-to-end -end encryption was even greater than I first thought. With traditional payment apps and non-encrypted blockchains, bad actors can track your spending and even know your location in real time. For example, if you pay at a coffee shop and I can know the location of that coffee shop based to, because I know the address of that coffee shop on a blockchain, that means I can know your location by watching that blockchain. This is not possible with MobileCoin thanks to its zero knowledge encryption. That's when I knew I had to join MobileCoin full-time and help make our vision of an end-to-end -end encrypted stable payment a reality. So with our payments app Mobi, which you just saw, we hope to make payments accessible to the 1.7 billion unbanked people around the world, 25% of the world's adult population who don't have access to the world-class payment apps that we already have, that most of us have access to. Meanwhile, we're protecting them from predatory corporations and criminals alike. So it's an even better experience than you have with traditional payment apps. And with that, let's see how it works. I'm going to send $10 US dollars to Co. All right. Let's hope this works. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Praying to the demo gods. And actually, Bob, before you hold up, hold up before you finish this, I want to talk to our technical team. That is not my screen. Yep. Our, the screen share is not live. That's not my balance. That's from last night or something when we were doing test runs. I want to make sure that, uh, you this know, we're doing, there we go. Boom. All right, sweet. <laughs> okay. All right, as you saw, here, let me go back. Okay, as you saw, you enter the amount, $10 USD. You select your person. You can pick up by your name straight from your contacts, just like sending a text message. 
And then you can even add a note and this note will be encrypted on the blockchain too. So it's only shared between you and the person that you're sending to. This uses a fun technology we call Mobi Private Pay. That's what we, how we describe it in this app. All your payments through the pay button are end-to-end -end encrypted with zero knowledge encryption. Cool. I'm going to send this. All right, don't look at my... Oh, you... <laughs> <laughs> and the paper went through. It's a oh. little slow because of Zoom, but it's really, it's uh, 60 frames per second on my side. All right, fingers crossed. Oh, it came through on my thing. Zoom is delayed. I blame it on Zoom. It was less than five show seconds it. on mine. Show it. It was, I got 462. <laughs> Anyone see that? That's it. I do have a privacy. That's screen. it. It's as simple as that. Doesn't get much simpler than that. The, uh, I think it's something on the technical sides of the feed or something, but this is that was legit. <laughs> Sorry, I have a privacy screen, so I just want to make sure everyone saw that. We're not making that up. No, that was uh, exactly right. In encrypted U.S. dollars, it's like no middleman. Precisely from Florida to Bogota. Right? He didn't have to go to a Western Union or, again, go through any type of intermediary. He was able to send that permissionlessly. Um, oh, oh, there, there it we is. Go. They there we go. It. They're refreshing it now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think you know, that, that highlights a lot of the, the points that we spoke to earlier. Um, I do want to give the folks here um, an opportunity. If you guys have any questions for Bob um, or for Henry or I, we're happy to answer them. Um, Henry and I definitely will be here around later, but mm -hmm. any questions right now about either EUSD, Mobi, or MobileCoin? We're getting some crickets. <laughs> All right, we got one in the back. We were clear. Can you speak up just a little bit? Sorry. I heard a question about the off-ramps. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to repeat the question because I, I bet not everybody heard it. The question was, what about off-ramping the um, electronic dollars in your wallet, particularly as you're around the world in Nigeria? I forgot what the other examples were. And that's a really great question. And um, I'm just going to say, this went live this morning, um, even transacting. Uh, off-ramps are a huge priority for our company. It is one that we haven't entirely solved yet. Um, one off-ramp we have today is to be able to do a crypto off-ramp. And so we will, you will be able to off-ramp to an exchange, not directly to your bank account. Um, uh, but what we really want is you to be able to off-ramp straight to a bank account. And that is where the wire and the moon pay quotes that you saw earlier really play in. They have committed to helping us with those off-ramps. And that's their business. But those off-ramps are not live yet. Um, I don't know if you guys can kind of tweak that to share my screen or update or refresh it. I just posted what Henry was talking about. Kind of today, again, live, you can off-ramp to FTX and Binance if you're a crypto native. Again, the goal is to be able to get to a point where it goes directly to your bank account. And then this... <laughs> Thomas wants to know how you can get EUSD today. And the way you get EUSD today is somebody who has it sends it to you. There actually is no on-ramp for EUSD today. Um, again, coming soon, coming very soon, um, we will have, again, crypto on-ramps, and MoonPay and Wire will follow with um, banking on-ramps. So uh, if you want EUSD today, find Nevin, find Thomas, because I sent them each some, with the explicit purpose so they would send it to you. <laughs> you can find me also. <laughs> Another question over there. I want to repeat this so Bob can maybe also tackle this. I don't know, Bob, if you're still online, but the question so everyone else can hear is also, is we mentioned a couple times that uh, we're not necessarily trying to compete with crypto apps. 
we are, you know, we consider ourselves competing with payment apps. And uh, I just started, what was your name? Christina asked if uh, one of our competitors could be considered a Western Union or identifying maybe other specific competitors. Uh, Bob, if you're still on there, feel free to tackle that. Yeah, the uh, initial inspiration for me was, you know, I was thinking about Venmo and Cash App last year, and I noticed how they're U.S. only. And the reason they're U.S. only is because they're like a, a facade over the U.S. banking system, which is obviously proprietary to the U.S. And the same is true for a lot of other countries, even in uh, continents like Europe. Um, while, while you can transfer money between bank accounts, the actual bank account technologies are, tend to be specific from country to country. So it's a real challenge for a traditional payments app to expand internationally. What I realized with this is, um, especially once we have EUSD and the stablecoin, we can provide that same experience that you have like with Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, um, except for we can uh, replace the banking infrastructure and make this work internationally at internet speed. Um, but we'll have the user, like I said uh, before during my introduction, we'll have the user experience that'll enable, enable us to go wide or mainstream. So most users, you know, most people, um, even if they're familiar with crypto, they're just trying to pay their friend back for lunch or send money to their family back home. And they prefer to do that in their fiat currency. You know, really the technology should get out of the way and let the user solve their problem in a non-intrusive way. Yeah, I, I think the answer to your question is essentially, uh, yes, we are competing with all of the above. And like Bob said, Venmo, Cash App, Western Union, PayPal are part of that, except unlike PayPal, if you guys have read in the news, uh, there's no way to huh, freeze funds or fine you for anything you might say. I know that's kind of a developing story, but. Yeah, I would, I would add one more thing too. And one way, you know, it's like, yes, Moby's a payments app, but there's also the mobile coin technology, which these other companies could adopt mm -hmm. and they could adopt the US. Yeah. So we're interested in that too. Yep. As we have uh, mentioned a couple of times, uh, just about everything we do, we put out open source. And um, our team is very interested in people taking that source and creating a larger uh, developer community that would uh, include our technology in their apps as well. I think we have, one, we have time for one, more, one couple of questions. Are we good, Victoria? All right, I'll go from there and there. Is that good? Yeah, I got a question. You got $10 from a friend. Uh, what do we have to do to get a beer in that bar with those $10? I can, uh, if you had the app, well, well, how about this? While the other guy's asking the question, we'll, we'll see if we can run this technically if you want, but essentially. I need Colombian pesos to buy the beer. Oh, okay. Uh, I you how do I do USD. that? Can I use reserve or, or what? <laughs> I need to buy, <laughs> I need to get a beer. How do I get Colombian Somebody pesos from get a beer. <laughs> Do you want to take that or you want me to take it? I mean, I think we might each have a different answer. Maybe we'll both take it. You know, I think, okay, go for it. I think there's like a today question and there's like a how do we see the future unfolding kind of question. Uh, uh, my answer is gonna be a future unfolding okay. answer. Cody, you have a today answer? Okay, that, that is not possible to do today. Not I, with mobile. Not, not unless, they, unless that person who you're buying the beer from wants dollars, wants USD. If that person wants Moby. is, yeah, if that person has Moby, then I can pay that person with EUSD today, as long as they're comfortable custodying dollars in okay. EUSD. So as today, Moby is not connected to Reserve. I cannot send Moby funds to Reserve. That is correct. Yes, okay. that is correct. That's opportunity chance there, right there. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I think there was another question over there. Over, over there. Perfect. Acquire users for your app. The, Bob, just so you're tracking, everyone else, two questions. Uh, first one is, what's our revenue model? And the second one is what we're doing to expand our user base and attract more users. Yeah, okay. So we're a startup, right? So to us, the most important thing at this moment is um, finding our market and growing. So we're not as concerned about uh, our revenue model today. We are, we'd like to see adoption. Right, and so peer-to-peer -peer is where we're focused. We want to see that network grow. But our plans for layering things on past that include um, the financial services space. And actually, I heard some talk similar, very aligned thinking um, on stage earlier today, where we want to make available to all of those unbanked people that Bob talked about, we want to make them have the same kind of tools 
for savings and for wealth creation and for value preservation um, as the wealthy have. Okay, and we think that there is room in those tools for us to have a sustainable business model as well. But we need to get to scale. Similarly, um, just like Bob has all that experience from Square with working in the merchant space, we want to work on the merchant space as well. And we also think that in the merchant space, there is the opportunity for us to get paid by providing value-added services, but no merchant wants to take something that people aren't paying with yet. So again, first step, get to scale. And then um, finally, uh, there's things like remittances. Um, remittances are hard, they're expensive today, right? And so again, I think we can make remittances easy, affordable, and have room to get paid and to create a sustainable business. So those are our thoughts around how we grow to a sustainable business. Did you want to talk about the baskets at all and the different types of compound or... Oh, um, I think uh, part of what Co is, is alluding to is we talked earlier about the, um, the R token and we intend to do a yield a component R token with the compound and the Aave. Um, that is not, that yield is gonna go to the RSR stakers. And so um, we are also thinking we could participate in RSR staking as a way to create some sustainability because we fundamentally believe in that underlying basket and would not be worried about um, the stake that we put to work that way. And I think there was one last question behind it. I don't know if the gentleman that read Jacket was on his smartphone still had a question. Oh, never mind. I thought he had a question. Sorry, it's very bright. Bob, are you still on? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah, Bob, I, I couldn't hear the question, though. The question was, what's our first use case? What are we targeting for the first people to use Moby? What are they going to be doing? Uh, well, this week, right now, Moby, we're uh, just kind of, uh, we've got some really cool features that we think kind of crypto enthusiasts and early adopters will find interesting. And those are kind of an invite with payment. As we talked about, you can send money to anyone, whether they have a Moby wallet or not. And that money will transfer because we're non-custodial. Once they sign up, that money will transfer from your phone to their phone in real time. So that, that's new to crypto as far as I know. And we're reaching out to uh, kind of crypto enthusiasts about that. There's also, at, we also have some other cool technologies like SVR and private pay, which I think that they'll find interesting. As Co said, SVRs, where you can use a pin to recover your keys. Um, so you don't have to uh, have your 20, or you don't have to find your 24 words. Um, beyond that, uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but we have some cool stuff that we're going to start piloting this week. Um, basically, we're uh, working with uh, creators to uh, help them make money and support their projects. I would, so I would say one all. thing to, th to that question. I would argue anything yeah. that there's a use case for our pay currently for, you will eventually <laughs> be able to also adopt to EUSD and Mobi, except the reach will be several times greater, several orders of magnitude greater, right? Because it's now global. I see um, Bob's getting a call. I think we're going to say goodbye, Bob. Uh, thank here. you so much Prepare. for joining us. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think we're going to... I think right. we're getting booted off stage yeah. anyways. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, All right. we'll be here. Please, uh, Bob, thank you very much so much. <laughs> and then reserve everyone here. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Great to meet you all. Gracias, Pogeta.